praise the Lord, God has brought us to another Good Friday. You know, this is a bad Friday for the whole world. But just one man made it good. And I want to tell you what it cost him to make this a Good Friday. Because if you understand correctly what the word of God has to say, you will truly rejoice to know that this is a time that we have, will never ever understand. You know why? I have seen people come to Good Friday services from the time I was a child. I have seen people weep, cry, abstain from all uh, good foods or go on fast. And I have seen how they weep and pledge. But after a little time, all that is gone. Why is it? Ignorance is a great sin. You know, he shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, what does this Friday meant or means to the church and what it meant to the Son of God? First thing, there was a crucifixion in heaven. What is it? When the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit looked at man who was a rebel, who despised, rejected, blasphemed, and turned his back upon the creator. And he was now a subject of the prince of the power of the air. And he is Satan. And now God weeps. His heart is broken. And in the counsel of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus said, Who is Jesus? He was God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and it was same in the beginning. But he did not think it robbery to be equal with God. Why? He was God. But he made himself of no reputation. He was willing now to limit himself to a body and to space, to time. And to a place. He did a great sacrifice in heaven. He was ministered by the angels. It was a sinless land. We can't even comprehend what sinless means. But he left all that and condescended to a sin sick evil world. Where people were so rebellious that they... Even though he was born to the Jewish woman, the Virgin Mary, and they accepted him as the one whom God sent, but he came unto his own, and his own received him not. They rejected him. Friends, that's not the story of Good Friday. I want you to understand, this story was written by people Long years ago, like the prophet Isaiah, you know, he gives us a good description of what Jesus looked like on Good Friday. If you were to turn to Isaiah chapter 51 or 52, and I just read to you one or two verses, we have 52 13, behold. My servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and excel and be very high. As many were astonished at thee. His visage was marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. So shall the so shall the many nations look at him and then they will realize. You know what my thought here is? His visage on the cross was so bad. 
he did not appear like a human being. He did not appear in the form of a man. Why? He was made a curse on the tree. With whose curses? He who knew no sin became sin for us. And he took upon himself gladly. You know friends, on this, at this time, you find on the first Good Friday, darkness, three hours of darkness prevailed on this earth. It was not an eclipse. The sun refused to shine. And the earth began to quake. Because it could not bear to see the suffering of the only begotten of the Father who was full of grace and truth now made a spectacle of reproach. The Creator being brought to the place where his creation is openly disgracing him. And it was something beyond my comprehension. He who knew no sin. I don't think there's any, any man on this earth or any religious leader or any great person who can say, I was without sin. The great King David said, I was born in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none that doeth right. No, not one. Friends, Jesus came and became. I want you to understand two words. In, on Good Friday, you must understand Christ identifies himself with you. And on Easter Sunday, we identify ourselves in Christ. There's a big difference in this. He took my place. And he was paying my penalty. He was going through vicarious sufferings which are beyond my comprehension. The sun refused to shine. The earth quaked. Why? Because it could not bear the sorrow, the pain, the anguish, the hurt that this man was going through. It was at this time he was marred. He did not appear on the cross as the son of the living God. He appeared as the most wicked, terrible man on the face of this earth. Why? Not only just ordinary sin. The darkness covered that part of it. That is the place where his very visage. I have seen some people with various types of diseases and with various types of spiritual oppression where their figures have been marred. But Jesus went through it all on that cross. You know, Christianity is not a religion. It is God becoming man, taking man's place and the penalty that man can never pay. He paid. You, do you know there are some people with secret sins? Oh, they say, past it is horrible. I'll skip that. I'll just tell you it was the worst. That was the sin in the dark place. What does that mean? The son of God, you know, he bore it all. You know, the physical sufferings. If you have seen those films, you see the physical sufferings depicted but it was beyond that 
his soul his spirit was made an offering for sin and the ultimate penalty for sin is the soul that sinneth it shall die what does that mean it is the cry that jesus made he made seven cries on the cross the first one was my god my god why hast thou forsaken me god forsook his only begotten son why for you don't think this is just a ceremonial thing you know i i heard some people say today we had to eat dry fish and, and uh, maybe dal oh we had to fast all this time this is all your futile you know your mind that is suggesting these ideas it is not just a mental transformation it is not an emotional transformation it is not just a physical transformation in this physical body is the life and what did he do for you you know when there was such darkness and when there was such evil what did jesus do for you it is said in the scriptures you know uh, he you know descended to the very lower bowels of the earth why he did not just preach a philosophy he said the devil is come to kill and to destroy and i am come that you might have life and that life was robbed from adam by the prince of the power of the air and he brought death upon mankind and jesus descended to the very lower regions of the earth why he was going right into the arena of satan he did not preach sermons he went into battle for whom for you for me for the world and there he declared war against satan and all his emissaries his kingdom beloved you must understand he was fulfilling the promise of redemption that he gave to adam and eve i believe genesis 2:15 the seed of the woman will crush the head of that old serpent he went into his very arena into his very kingdom if you and i went there it is a place of no return for any human being but the son of god went in your stead in my stead and he faced satan and the bible says he spoiled all principalities and powers and put them into open shame do you know what he did you know he crushed the head of that old serpent in his own kingdom and fulfill the promise of redemption that was given in genesis 3 the seed of the woman and he spoiled all the powers and put them into open shame and that's why he said when he you know came out of that he said all power all authority in heaven and in earth is given unto me he didn't say in hell why he came out of hell victor and he came with the great victory over sin sickness demons death hell and the grave so friends that is where jesus went for you he went into the depths and he destroyed the powers that are holding you and i want to tell you 
if you are not living by what he has done you are come short of the glory of god you are a defeated christian and god is concerned because he is coming to take unto himself a glorious bride without blemish without spot without a wrinkle why he has spoiled all principalities and powers he crushed the head of that serpent he conquered death hell and the grave and he became the first fruit of redemption and he has given unto us that redemption you know today people are belittling all what we say why we don't live by logic by reason by argument the just shall live by faith what is faith appropriate what he has done for you and make it your own don't be a limping christian i see that many people have got into the ritual of christianity they are observing the law the law and the prophets were abolished in the lord jesus christ we don't live by that law we live by a higher law moses said unto thee thou shalt not commit adultery but jesus said i say unto you if you were to look upon a woman with the desire of lusting after you have already committed adultery in your heart it's a higher law you know this is a law where we not only love our wife and our neighbor as ourselves but we love our enemy where is this manifesting in the church in the christian in the christian home beloved when god has done such a tremendous thing he was made a curse on the tree he looked in human he descended to the bowels of the earth he went into the very uh, kingdom of satan he crushed that the he, enemy enemy's head with his own feet and then he spoiled all principalities and powers put them into open shame and he conquered death hell and the grave and he rose again and he said all authority all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth therefore you go and preach the gospel to every creature why didn't he mention hell hell is defeated to the christian hell is under his feet others keep hell on their head beloved do you have the victory of calvary have you identified yourself and reckoned yourself to be dead indeed unto sin in the lord jesus christ and have you come to the place that you have a conscience void of offense void of guilt if our hearts condemn us not we have peace with god beloved this is what good friday is to me i'll tell you if there was no good friday there is no easter good friday i identified myself with him and i reckon myself to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto god and on easter sunday he i ident he identified with me and now i identify with him in his resurrection are you walking the resurrected life are you a victim or a victor there's no half way in this you know the commands are so great be ye holy for i am holy how can you be holy like jesus it is possible you can a double minded man is unstable in all his ways you must have your heart circumcised you must have that one and only goal keep looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith 
friends that is good friday it is a good friday now is not a bad friday he paid it all and all to him i owe so therefore friends this good friday we have already partaken of the communion this communion means you know christ in me the hope of glory christ in me i am his and he is mine beloved let us walk in the victory of calvary you know jesus cried out his first cry was father forgive them for they know not what they do when they were nailing him to the cross he was was he saying father forgive those soldiers for, father forgive those people who are jeering and criticizing and insulting me no he was saying father forgive pontius pilate the governor father forgive herod the great king father forgive lord even the chief priest in the temple they plotted this forgive them why they do not know what they are doing that is why you are able to forgive ha they say they are crafty they planned it out they got me into the net friends they have only a limited physical little brain like a potato that cannot think beyond their nose but thanks be to god we have the knowledge and the wisdom of god we know whom we have believed and we are persuaded that our god is able to keep that which you have committed unto him against that day that is the power so go home today get on your knees and say lord holy spirit reveal to me what jesus went through for me how he bore it how he endured the cross how he said it's all finished father into thy hands i commend my spirit you know friends one of the biggest things today in the church is unforgiveness what did jesus say on the cross to all these cruel crafty people who manipulated his terrible nasty death father forgive them for they know not are they ignorant fools king herod pilate the chief priest were were they the scum of the earth they were the cream of the earth but he said father forgive them friends when you forgive you feel forgiven when you forgive you feel the burden released if you have anyone that has hurt you jesus said when you go to the altar leave your gift at the altar if your brother has offended you go and be reconciled to him that is where peace that marvelous peace that comes from the very heart of god will descend into your life and if you are at peace with god if you are at peace with your neighbor and if you can love your enemy you have heaven in your heart on earth and god will be reigning and ruling upon the throne room of your heart bow your heads as we pray you know one of the biggest sins that i have seen is people not being able to forgive when you won't forgive you get bitter when you get bitter you get angry when you get angry you begin to murder that person in your mind and heart and what happens you become a awful terrible sinner who can't even go into the presence of the lord i want to pray for those who will say today on this good friday i am going to act upon what jesus said father forgive them for they know not what they do lord i am going to forgive while all heads are bowed all eyes are closed just raise your hand and show me 
that you are going to do it today as you leave this service that you are going to be reconciled to your brother your sister to your enemy and you need the grace of god to do that i'll pray for you all heads bowed all eyes closed you raise your hand and i will pray for you is there anyone yes god bless you i see that hand yes i see that hand god bless you raise it high yes i see that hand yes i see that hand god bless you yes i see that hand make it a point today not tomorrow you don't know what a day will bring forth as you go get on the phone or write a letter and get it off your chest and ask them to forgive you and restore them into that marvelous relationship with god father in heaven in jesus name i pray for these people who raise their hands oh lord your grace is sufficient your love will give them the power to do the impossible lord may they be in right relationship with you and with one another this mercy and this grace we ask in jesus precious name Amen.